Well, as far as the women's doubles draw is concerned, this is from the second quarter of the draw. And the uh, winners uh, from last week uh, had a walkover against the number three seeds, Kim So Young and Kong Hee Yong from Korea. So, uh, this section of the draw, well, every round is a tough round in the Super 750 events. I can tell you that uh, Yila and Senen are on court right now. They're right at the bottom of this section as we're looking at it. But very disappointing that we lost two seeds. Three seeds, I beg your pardon, before play got underway in the women's doubles. Not only that Korean pair that we can see in this section, but we also lost the World Championship silver medalist, Rahayu and Ramadanti. They pulled out, as did last year's beaten finalists, Bekanar and Lee So-hee. Orange, number one, women's doubles from Japan, Kim Nakanishi. So the Japanese combination of Iwanaga and Nakanishi. Nakanishi, the left-hander, make their way onto center stage. Obviously in good form, having been in the semi-final a week ago in Vanta, in Finland, at the Arctic 500 events. And yes, there'll be a big roar for the home players. Mike and Floro and Sara Tuerson making their 11th appearance here as a combination at the Denmark Open. And their previous best was a quarter-final. That was three years ago when they were the number six seeds. A lost out uh, to um, Matsumoto and Nagahara, who went all the way through to the final. Well, this, I can tell you, will be a third meeting between these two pairs. Both previous encounters have been won by Iwanaga and Nakanishi. Last time they met, which was in the World Championships in the second round earlier this year. That was in Copenhagen. What a match it was. 23-21 in the deciding game, an hour and 28 minutes. I think we'd settle for another one like that. So, Sara Hosseni of Austria is our... Yes, umpire for you are this one. And you are serving. And which side? Yes. Which serve? Which uh, side? This yeah. side. So, if I've read that correctly, the Japanese pair have uh, chosen to receive. Uh, Japanese pairs often do that in women's double. I can't quite understand it, but there must be a logic to it somewhere along the line. So. As far as the Japanese pair is concerned, uh, this is Rin Iwanaga. She's 24 years of age from Yanai in Yamaguchi Prefecture. 166 equates to about five foot five and a half. And as you can see, they're just one place down on the world rankings from their career high of 15. In fact, it was a total of seven weeks across three different spells at 15 in the world. And if they have a good European tour, here, yeah, three European World Tour events back to back, I wouldn't be surprised if their ranking goes up even more. Nakanishi, the left-hander, is 27 from uh, Sagamihara in Kan Kan Kanagawa, suburbs of Tokyo. I'll get my teeth put in in a minute. Haven't been in a final since last year's Asian Championships, the Japanese pair. Michael Frogor is 28 years of age, and she's from this very city in which we play the Denmark Open. Onsa. Current ranking of 19, uh, but did spend a total of seven weeks at 14 in the world. That was across three different spells. Sara Tusen is the older of the two at the age of 32. 
And as far as they're concerned, well, they've been four-time European Championship bronze medalists. A couple of finals at world tour level. And that was back in 2020. They reached the final of the Indonesian Masters 500 event. And earlier this year, we're in the final of the US Open, which is a 300 event. So as I was telling you, our umpire from Austria and our service judge, Seamus Halpin from Ireland. And uh, having just told you about the Danish pair being four-time European Championship medalists, I'm delighted to say that sitting alongside me is a four-time European Championship medalist. Three silver medals, Kirsty Gilmore has joined me for the last two matches. This is a difficult one to call, isn't it, Kirsty? I think this could be a pretty good game. And the last time they played, it was a thriller. Absolutely, yeah. This is going to be... I know the Japanese have taken the last two meetings, but I don't know. I, I think in this hall with the home crowds, I think we could see something from Sarah and Mike in here. And they're on a little bit of a... They have a little bit of good momentum right now, so this is going to be very interesting. Yep. Uh, they lost last week in the second round of the Arctic Open to the pair that went on to win. Lu Sheng Shu and Tang Ning. So that's uh, nothing to be ashamed of if you lose to the eventual champions. You used to play a little bit of women's doubles. I seem to remember you were pretty good at women's doubles. I've dabbled. Dabbled in doubles. Um, dabbled in doubles. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that one for later. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed playing uh, ladies' doubles in my, in my time. I stopped just before I was 21, so it has been a little while. But I do get the occasional call-up for the Uber Cup yeah. championships and things. So, Yeah, I miss it. And on my left, Martin Fogart and Sarah Tursen, Denmark. Sarah Tursen to serve to Pierre Nakanishi. Love all. Play. Yeah, the traditional little bow from the Japanese players to all four corners of the court to. Uh, pay respect to the court officials, including the line judges. Service over. Oh, was a little One. ritual before no. we get underway. <laughs> well, it's been 22 years since a pair from Denmark has won the women's doubles title here at the Denmark Open. 2001. Ulrika Olsen and Helena Kirkewall won a Danish final. I think it's a tall order to expect Thorgor and Tuesen to win the title this week. But you never know. That's the beauty of sport. It certainly is. That statistic is surprising to me, though, with uh, Pedersen and Yule having been active in that, that era. Uh, yes, they reached the final. That was 10 years ago. Only that one time? Only the one time. Wow, that is very surprising. Of course, uh, Christina Pedersen had a bit more success in the mixed doubles with Jürgen Fischer. She certainly did. Uh, yes, certainly did. In fact, Danish pairs won four mixed doubles titles in five years. Ooh. 2008 through to 2011. Four Danish Open titles for Jochen Fischer and Christina Pedersen in total. Good rally. Yeah, Ooh. nicely forward from Sarah Tuerson. That's a good flake. Japanese pair getting excellent length on those lifts and defense. 
just right. Four, I found yesterday in my game the way that the Japanese pair are hitting as we look at it, I found that a little fast. But today on this court one, from what I've seen already, it looks like it's the other way around. It looks I'm very glad you've said that yes. because Steen and I were discussing the drift and it's very minimal. It's, it's minimal. It's almost perfect playing conditions, it looks like, but I said that I thought the drift was going, the shuffle was going fast towards the far end and that is an absolutely Five, brilliant serve that from Tourson. Delightful. Totally caught. Well, Kirsty, I was telling you about Four. Danish success Four. in women's doubles at this tournament, the Denmark Open. Let me tell you about Japanese success. Uh, if you've got time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's not as uh, uh, convincing as maybe you would you would think. When we talk about the Super Series or World Tour era, going back to 2007, three different Japanese pairs have won four women's doubles titles here at the Denmark Open. But my fun fact about it Can is. You Every single time a Japanese pair has won those four titles, they've been the number one seeds. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's satisfying. That's a good <laughs> stat. It is. I like that. First challenge of this women's doubles. Oh, it's just long. Service over. Six, four. Oof. What do you think the key is going to be here, Kirsty? Because to me, the Danes have the opportunity, they have the skills to maybe rush the net. I'm not saying that the Japanese pair don't, but I think they're more, the Japanese pair are more solid in defensive play. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that's kind of the second little error from Mikan. And I know we're early into the game and we're just settling in, finding the rhythm and everything, but I do think as a whole, I think you're right. I think the Japanese are a little bit more solid at just bumping that shuttle back, getting it back onto the back line. Um, yes, I would say there's a little bit more consistency there. But if those kind of like net rushes and those little chances taken fall on the Danes' side today, then I think that could be the, the key to changing the pace and, and sneaking those really important points. Yeah. But they've got to be courageous then, the Danes. Yes. To, to take those half chances. There's no point sitting back then. I think if you were going to play a sitting back game against the Japanese pair, um, I don't, I think they can do that all day. I think you need to bring something to the table that's, you know, going to get through those brick wall defences and, and change up the pace and, and nip away at them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's the sort of, you know, taking a chance on the interception there. That wasn't easy. They took the chance and made it count. Service over. Seven, eight. I think in this game, as with many women's doubles games, I think this will be won from the midcourt forward. Yeah. I don't think women's doubles is won from the midcourt back. I think everyone can hit it hard. I think everyone can hit nice angles. But it's who, like you say, has the bravery to step forward in the midcourt, take those little net chances like that. Really nice from Sarah. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh, that's a beauty. Lovely. From Iwanaga. Eight. 
Right, Kai Nakashima. well left and I think that's an indication of the drift you were talking about I think especially on those punchy ones those kind of 45 degree angle ones they're going to travel out you either need to go super high or find a bit more of control if you're going to go for the, the punchy ones that's a good rush forward yeah, to the net from Tuason once again You know, she was a very good soccer player in her youth. Sarah? Yeah. Oh. Had to make a choice at age 13 whether she was going to go on and become a professional footballer or whether she was going to play badminton. How lucky we are she chose badminton. Would you like a fun fact? Go on, then. Me too. I had to choose between badminton and football when I was around 11. Really? Yeah. Yep. Were you associated with one of the top clubs? No, not particularly. Um, I was kind of beginning to be in and around kind of... Regional and national regions. That's a very high standard indeed. We go to the mid-game interval. 11-9, the advantage to the Japanese pair in this opening game. Hvis vi skal få lidt mere balance i, når vi sådan ligger lidt ovenpå, uden at have kæmpe store chancer, så trykker vi måske ved lidt for meget i duellerne her. Så vi husker også lige bare lige at prikke til dem en gang, eller trykke os og så bare være klar på den næste. Så vi ikke hver gang er et område, hvor vi sådan spiller os lidt op, så tror vi bare, vi skal have den nu. Okay, så lige, lige ro på i de der faser. Er med på, hvad mener? Ja. Simpelthen en DF, vi kommer lidt fremad. Vi kan bare tænke, at nu skal den bare afgøres på en her. Rolig, vi spiller ikke mere. Okay. Ude fra hjørnet her, fra around the head'en her. Thank you, coach. Så kører vi noget afvikling på, okay? Ja. Yeah. Okay. Ja, det kan jeg godt se. Jeg kan også godt se, at du rykker rigtig meget. Det er derfor, prøv at sige, skal vi finde lidt mere ro? Så er det Danish coach urging his players to stay calm. Not play quite so quickly. Well, that's totally contrary to what we were really saying, wasn't it? We felt that they needed to take those so half chances. Um, a little bit, a little bit, but I think maybe they're they're rushing at those chances. I think to find the calmness within those chances. I'm not. My Danish is not good. <laughs> I didn't pick that up, but I think maybe I do think they need to take these kind of take it on at the net, but maybe just with a little bit more clarity. Maybe they're just snatching at it a little bit too much right now. But saying that, the the scoreline is is decent. That's unlucky she found a good space there. 12, 10. Have you picked up much Danish in all your years? Not in doing this? No, nah, I don't speak any Danish. I understand a few words. Same. It's my sixth year playing club here and um, my Danish is, apart from a few foods, my Danish is no better than when I arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and my argument is, everyone's English is so good. Yeah, stood her ground. I like mm. that from Tuason. Oh, it's cool, just long. That's a shame. That was a really well worked rally from the Danes. Headlines this pair from Japan last year when they reached the final of the 
the Badminton Asia Championships in Manila. Out. Lost out to the world champions. Oh, there's the another challenge here. They were right the first time. I love a good service line challenge. What did you think? In or out? I'm going to say out. I think the umpire had a pretty good view of that. Well, I thought Tuerson was immediate and very definite in her challenge. It was out. Well done, line judge. Challenge on success. Oh, umpire calls umpire. that one. One challenge remaining. Service over. 14. Yeah, clearly. 11. Short. Looking at it again. Play. Good flick serve. Oh, my goodness. That's good anticipation from Nakanishi. The pace of that rally was certainly up from what we have seen. There was a bit of real sting to everyone's shots there, but just that little loose one from Mike. And Service fall call, too, call high. too high. Service over. High. 12, 15. Too high. The shot is high when you hit it. Well, players know because the service judge has to always give an arm or hand indication as to why he or she has called the fault on the serve. So there is absolutely no need for players to ask the umpire for clarification. It's one of my bugbears. <laughs> I know, you just want a little bit of indication, though. Just long, that's well left. 13, 15. One thing I find funny with doubles versus singles is that before the shuttle lands and as a doubles player, 16, you can say no, 13. no, no, no to your, as if you're saying it to your partner. And perhaps the line judges could hear that. But as a singles player, you can give absolutely no celebration or indication as what you think the line call will be. We're always told to not make a fist or not shout before the line, the shuttle lands. Yeah. Whereas in doubles, you can verbalize 14, what you 16. hope or think it will be. Yeah, but that only comes from your partner. Yeah, not, not the player hitting the shuttle. This is true. Oh, that's a very good point. I'll, I'll give you that one. Strings have gone in the racket, so even I got. Very difficult to control the shot with broken strings. like that that's only half pace it was all about angle and placement and it forced the error yeah sometimes the less you give someone in speed the more they have to produce if the shuttle's coming in fast it'll come out fast so if you actually take the pace off and force them to do something with it put pace on them mm, themselves create yeah. Their own pace. yeah it can be quite difficult in defense to judge that Eighteen, 
16. That's a good serve. Yeah, skim the net. No possibility of hitting the shuttle below the height of the tape. Had to hit it in an upward direction, and well, that's felt trouble for the Danes. Much, much more positive within the rally now, the Japanese combination. Hunting the shuttle, looking to hit in a downward direction. I think a massive part of that rally for the Japanese was um, their righty-lefty combo. There was a few times where the Danes tried to switch to the other half of the court, but either the right or the left hand was waiting for them. Oh, that's a nice place to... Yeah, I think that's a good point. But from a 16-all scoreline, now for game point opportunities from Iwanaga and Nakanishi. That's gone long, and the opening game on a run of five straight points. Japanese combination win the opening game against Fogo and Tuerson. 21-16 in 19 minutes. Good opening game. Yeah, that's a pity she was there. Fogo couldn't get it steep enough to keep it in. We are really supposed to win, and we hit well. Og vi, og, vi, og vi har noget at lægge på det her sæt. Okay? Husk nu her. Jeg, jeg synes, noget af det, der gør lidt på os, det er det, vi snakker om inden, det er, at når de flytter os rigtig hurtigt i defensiven, det gør de stadig rigtig meget, fordi der er nogle headbjørn til over til forhåndshjørnet. Og så flytter de faktisk også rigtig meget, når du står ned langs den linje for den forhånd. Så prøv at tage lidt mere fart af, og måske også en skær den ind mod midten også. For det er klart, det vi har sværest ved at løse, øhm, udover at vi laver for mange fejl, men det er primært i, i trykspillet. Ja, ikke? Det, det, det kan vi ikke rigtig sige, det løser vi bare. Det gør vi bedre her i anden sæt. Men i forhold til det her med offensiven, så skal vi lige tænke over at skære lidt mere fra, fra forhånden især, og gerne med midten, over for round the her. Gå nu bare med afvikling her, så vi ikke får den blæst over for forhånden eller for hendes baghånd. Okay? Så ikke, ikke bare slå med lukkede øjne. Det er vigtigt, at vi får den ned med stejlighed på. Ellers er det venstre kejlen, der slår i lige side. Så smæk den højt op på hende. Okay? Det er, det er det element, der gør mest ondt lige nu, så er de haft et par gode saver, men ellers har vi trykket lidt for meget ud og måske satset lidt for meget. Det er det. Ja, ikke? Court 1, ja. 20 seconds. Court 1, altså, 20 seconds. Jeg kan tænke, at vi godt kunne gøre bedre her, som vi har med, ikke? Så skal vi bare lige mærke, at vi, vi, vi har, vi har sangslaget point på den her. Ja, ikke? Well, nice coaching there from Thanks Jesper Horgård. Love all. Danish coach, Play. first of all, telling his players that they're playing well. And they are. Uh, but he was concerned that the Japanese pair were moving them around uh, very quickly. And they've got to somehow stop that happening. I identified what I think we'd identified in the opening game, which was steepness of smash very very important and his parting words the words that you and i understand in danish uh, you can do it come on so very positive in his coaching there i like that i like that in a coach too um i i think negativity is rarely the route to bring out the best performances in players no. um okay to assess what's happening but i think you have to focus on what we are doing well, what we can do well, and how we're going to win the points, not necessarily why we're losing the points. Of course, it's okay to take stock of that too, but I think the overall message has to be one of positivity. A 
again, Sarah, just stepping into that net. That's a nice shot. Little midcourt. Good rally. Yeah. The space. Yeah. Three. No. Now, would you describe this as one choice of shot, that backhand cross court from Tuason, or would you say that it's good anticipation by Nakanishi? Um, I think Sarah, if she'd kept it to the right hand side of the of the service line of the middle line um, it would have been a bit more difficult for uh, Nakanishi but also with the left right hand combo it's so difficult to, to remember who's where and which hand you're dealing with mm. so I think a good, a good safe shot but well read She get that back. Oh, oh don't believe it. Yeah. What a rally. I'm just going to give a little round of applause there <laughs> from the commentary box. You're Great allowed rally. to do that. That was brilliant. Look at that. How on earth Two, did she get back three. that net cord? And then Nakanishi, what on earth was she thinking with her attempted kill? Mm -hmm. Utterly brilliant rally. Yeah, there's forgetting which one is the left-hander. That shot from Mikan Fulgo. Yeah, if you're going to go out wide on the serve, you have to be ready for up that line. And Mikan was a little late on that one. Yes, and then playing cross-court to the left-hander. Exactly. That's not a good idea. Well, they're challenging. Green Ivanaga challenges called in. Well, you're in a slightly better position than me to see. I thought that probably did land in. I'm, I, I think in. Here also, we go. But here we go. Yeah. Instant review tells us that it was plumb on the line. successful. One challenge remaining. I thought the lane judge had a pretty good view of Service that one. Over. Yeah. So far, I like the tempo better of this set. This it feels a little, um, feels a little higher. It feels a little bit more rhythmic than before. It felt a little edgy. I say as we have a flick serve out. Um, That's her second three. service error. Mm. Concern the Danish coaching bench. That's understandable. That's a great shot from Frogel. Just 
drive defence whipping it across court on the left-hander's backhand side. Service over. Six, five. Oh, Nakashima, always very vocal with his women's doubles pairs when he's coaching. You know, I get the sense, Kirsty, that the Danes know what they should be doing or trying to do, but it's just not working. Yeah, quite often it's the, you know exactly what to do, but it's just the execution of it. Um, when you've got such a solid, good pair fighting, actively fighting back against you and the tactics that you've brought to the table, it is to have that discipline in the tactics, but also the execution of it. Yeah. As with the first game, we have a tight scoreline right now. I'm just hoping that Sarah and Mike can, can keep this kind of solid play because the Japanese just kind of ran away with it in the last five points, so... Yeah, they did in that open game. Seven. Oh. It comes down to the, the overall consistency. Good def oh, it's just wide. I was going to say that's good defence. That was uh, two Eight, consecutive flip seven. serves, wasn't it, from Mike and Frogo? I think so. Yeah. Play. I think is what uh, coach was alluding to about steepness and placement of smashes. That not the hardest. In fact, it was almost what the Danes call a steep smash, was a, where the racket head just clips over the top of the shuttle. And it's all about creating angle rather than power. And as you were saying earlier, much more difficult defensively when you've got to put pace on the shuttle yourself rather than using your opponent's pace to feed off. Absolutely, especially on this side that the Japanese find themselves on right now. Yeah. The granny. Oh, it's just long. Service over. Nine, eight. Yeah, all credit to her. I think she was trying to get out of the way and she managed just. Just matrixed. <laughs>
Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind, Kirsty, that the Danes are better front court players. Yeah. They put it away much more efficiently. I agree. But it's whether they can get to the net to dominate that front court area. Exactly. Uh, the Japanese are very good at keeping it away from the uh, front court. So it's it is a tough task. Um, and so I think the Danes taking charge of that net will be key. But also in the same breath, I think their consistency from the rear and to not bleed a couple of errors there. Pushed it wide. Service over. Ten. Nine. Yeah, caught off balance with a good flick serve from Nakanishi. And it means that the Japanese pair have a two point advantage here at the mid game interval of the second game. Okay. Vores offensiv, og deres defensiv, end vi havde i starten der sæt her. Så det er også derfor, jeg beder om at spille nye bolde, og derfor jeg beder om at hele tiden variere den hastighed. Fordi de skal ikke have lov til at bare teste den rundt på os. Og lige så snart de laver en eller to løftfejl, eller for korte løft, så, de, så går de fra at være rigtig gode til at blive rigtig usikre. Ja. Det vi godt huske fra sidst. Men det er også vigtigt, at vi så bare lige holder, holder styr på os selv, så bare ikke leder efter alt muligt her. Vi skal være lidt mere i det, og lidt længere tid. Halve chancer. Spil en mere. Forfra. Nej, det behøver det. Så prik hen til dem. Hen til dem. Ja, hen til dem. Husk nu her, de har medvendt. Det er svært for dem. Alle stress ned mod baglinjen. Det er svært. Ja. En kort plis. Eleven. Nine. So 11-9, the advantage in passion plea from Jesper Holgor for his players to keep going and stick to the plan. Ah, this is where the Danes need to be careful. Your point that to keep the excitement of the match for us badminton fans, need to keep the scores close. Absolutely. And if the Danes aren't careful, I think that your point that the Japanese pair may race away might come to fruition in this second game. Yeah. 13, Opened up a four nine. point cushion. Just like that. Yeah. From nine all. Yeah. I think we've spoken a little bit more about the Danes just because they do play a, a, a riskier style of badminton, maybe a more proactive style. And uh, that's 14, two nine. overhead errors from yeah. Sarah early in this second half. Yeah, and you, you, can't, you can't really afford that, can you? I mean, it, when you've just lost two straight points to go to the mid-game inter, in interval, two points adrift. You've got to keep it tight when you come out again. Yeah. The resumption of play. Yeah. This is six straight nine. points from nine all for Iwanaga and Nakanishi. Is this the decisive move? Mind you, Steen and I were noticing that we had a scoreline of 15-10 in... Oof, my goodness me, indecision by the line again. judge there. Line judge, signal. Line judge, signal. Unsighted. Oh, well, I think that's good umpiring because the line judge pointed in, then said out, and there was too much indecision. And in fact, it was in. And so neither pair has lost a challenge here. I like the fact that the umpire has taken control and said, not verbally, but said to herself, I need to check that. Sure, I like so that too. I like that. Very good. You've seen some very good umpiring today, actually. Service over. 10, 16. 
Yes, in, in uh, a couple of our previous matches, Kirsty, there was a 15-10 scoreline within a game and players came back to win it. Oh, we love to see that. We certainly don't. Yeah, you mean you weren't watching? Oh, I um, was otherwise engaged. You were training. <laughs> yes. I was training with Carolina Marin. Is that a good enough excuse? That's a very good excuse. <laughs> yeah, good play. 11, 16. Can they recover from that seven straight point loss? Well, the home fans will certainly be hoping that they can. I think if the Danes are to recover this, I think it's it will be a case of them creating something. I don't see the Japanese, as far as we've seen so far, that they're not going to bleed errors. No, I agree. Yeah, good work. Service over. By Nakanishi 11. and Iwanaga. Time is running out for the Danes, though. smash from Tuason straight down the line. She almost reverses this. She, it almost comes off of her racket a little bit. Reverse slice. Reverse slice, yeah. Yeah. It long. 13, a rare error from the Japanese pair. Brilliant play Service from over. Iwanaga. 18-13. Kept three shots on Sarah Tursen before she finally had a, an opportunity to put the shuttle away. Always a good tactic in doubles, pin one of the players defensively. And then sometimes, you, or a lot of the time, you see them finish on the other player. So yeah. then both players become frustrated. Yeah, good angled 19, smash across the 13. body of Sara Tuason. And now the Japanese combination are just two points away from a place in the second round. Seven match point opportunities. Oh, it's just Out. wide of the centre line. Service over. 14. And 20. I do mean just wide. Place down, just a dropping shot. But let's see if they can do it five more times.
game. Yep. This time, Iwanaga and Nakanishi convert on their third match point opportunity. 21 16, 21 15. And in the end, the scoreline looks pretty comfortable. Uh, but it was awfully tight in the early Match stages of both games. And and just at the crucial moment, the Japanese 16, pair able to pile on the pressure and open up a, a cushion of opportunities. So 43 minutes for the victory. 21-16, 21-15. And they will play against last week's champions in the second round. The Finnish champions, Liu Shengshu and Tan Ning, in round number two. Welcome back to Odense for the Denmark Open. It's day two of competition and it's all first round matches today as indeed it was yesterday. Our last match of the day and what a match we've got. It's the reigning world champion, Hunawuta Widesan of Thailand up against.